Hey, Brandy. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. 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 Brandy yet? Maybe we just should do a quick introduction. You guys you haven't had a chance to meet Brandy yet. <laughs> so we've got Brandy, we've got Sherry uh, from the US. We've Hi, got, Sherry. Uh, hey, Brandy. Got Jeff. You might have spoken with Jeff already. And Hi, got, Jeff. Hey, Brandy. We've got Jose Luis Gonzalez from Luis. Mexico. Luis. Hi. Hello, my friend. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Great. And, um, Great. I thought we might have had um, Hellman uh, joining us. He's a Colombian. He's a fellow Colombian, but he lives in the U.S. He just joined with us today. Yay! He might, yeah, he might not yet get on the call. It's a bit late for him. I think it's about what, 9 p.m. Because um, he's in Florida or close to Florida. Anyway. So what's today about? Today's about lesson one. How did we all go with the uh, worthy ideal listening to the uh, to the video? I Anyone? Decided, I want you to be my mentor. <laughs> Anyone want to comment? Did we all listen to it? I did listen to it. I love it. Did you all do the homework? Did you all start to work through the content? I did. Got mine finished. So you're done. You're done. So, so part of part of today is after today. If you haven't yet gone through that, because I know some guys are fairly new, so they're probably still just getting on it. Uh, is to start to listen to a worthy idea, which is lesson one. Um, that one's probably one of the most important because that's going to set your vision for your quantum leap for the next twelve months, right? And um, if you've been going through the training, you'll see that in the platform in the team training portal. Our goal is to focus on, on 12 week periods. So we want to have a vision for 12 months, but we also want to have like milestones for every, every 90 days, because what that means is that it's going to give us 90 days to smash a goal, which that's going to keep us on our way to the big one. And if we don't quite get there, it gives us an opportunity to reflect, reevaluate, recalibrate and go again. Does that make sense? as opposed to just have one crack, you know, one crack for the whole year and then find that comes to the end of the year, oh, I've recruited three people this year. Oh, that wasn't good. You know what I mean? We don't want that. So we want to make sure that, um, you know, that we're doing that. And I think one of the things that we're also going to have as part of this structure is to do a, a team, what we call a WAM, a weekly accountability meeting. And so part of helping all of us stay on track to achieving our goals we want to make sure that um, we're doing the things that we know work. So part of, your, part of your daily routine, if you like, is completing your daily sparse tracker. And SPA stands for what? Who can tell me what SPA stands for? This is where I get to find out if you're listening to the training or not. <laughs> simple, productivity, simple productive actions or something oh, like that. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> What's go. the last S? Simple, productive actions. Just oh, plural. actions. Okay. All right. All right. Exactly right. So what I might do is I might just quickly see if I can find mine and share my screen to show you what that looks like. So have you all downloaded that? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, so, so, you, so it's in the training. So you go to um, your file, upload, file downloads, and you'll see that you've got, it's an Excel document. You click on it and you basically download it and you open it on your computer. You don't have to print it out. You can just keep it on your computer and work with it there. So let me just share my screen. If I lose you, I'll log back in. Hopefully I won't lose you because sometimes my system does. Do you want me to show mine so you don't have... Oh, yeah, and share your screen. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, let's do that. Is that okay? Then we won't lose you because I know you've had some issues with that. <laughs> All okay, right. So okay, so here's mine. Awesome. So that's what it looks like. Just scroll, scroll to the top, Randy, so we can see. So this is it. Yeah. So remember, we're working to a two-hour a day. That's, that's the promise. That's, what we'll, that's where the Club 120 network comes from. Yeah, we're working out for 20 minutes. Um, Sherry, I know you just got home from work, right? So we want you to not have to work another five hours on your business. 
And what we know, working with Slight Edge, is that if you do those simple productive actions every day, you will build momentum over time that will give you the leverage and the results that we want. So talk us through it, Brandy, just quickly. Your, talk us through your numbers. Okay, so um, number of friend requests. So 20 to me was a lot. Like I was like, whoa. But then after I started doing it, it wasn't that serious, right? Like I felt more comfortable with it. So my thing is um, the 20 friends. So you can see here that Monday I got five. So five, six, 10, 11, five and six. Um, number of new conversations. This is somewhere, this is, I see this as a weakness now that I'm tracking this, right? Like I'm not, I'm not having the conversations that I need to be. So, you know, obviously I'm bumping that up for this week and really focusing on getting these numbers. And then video chats, again, I feel like because I hadn't been doing this, um, you know, I haven't been doing a lot of calls, right? Because I, I mean, I'm just taking people that are coming to me, attraction marketing. So I'm doing a few, but with these conversations and starting conversations like this, I feel like it's going to, you know, go, go you're going to be like inundated with conversations. You're not, you're not going to struggle with two, right? Every day. And then um, number of conversations followed up. So you can see here, my numbers, I hit almost three every day. Sunday, I didn't do any. And the number of new prospects added to Network Rockstar's um, just two. So a lot of what I do is team-based and I need to focus more on my personal. So again, doing this really like shined a light on what I'm missing, right? Like it was like, whoa, I thought I was doing way more than I'm doing. So the number of team support conversations, these are, these are good. Um, I do a ton of these. And then friends made, I just, I get a ton of new friend requests now from, from building my, my presence online. But, you know, you can see here that, you know, of course that can be Helped. And then new teammates and new customers. I only had one new teammate this week and um, no new customers. So, you know, there's a hole in my, in my, what I'm doing. So, and then um, new Facebook lives. This is the stuff that I'm, you know, pretty good at. Um, number of posts on Facebook. All of these are good. New posts on personal page. I don't use my personal page as much, but I'm going to get better at this. This is something I'm working on and getting a plan in place. And it's something I really want to focus on for the training that I do. Um, not next week. Well, it will be three weeks from now that I do that. And then number of emails sent. So these are, you know, I send one every day to my list and then um, number of posts in network rock stars and 120. And then I didn't keep really track of this so much. Um, yeah, I should, but I didn't. So that's kind of my numbers for my daily spas for the week. Yeah, and we're, we're going to simplify these to maybe just totals so that we don't, we don't want to spend a lot of time in the meeting going through all everyone's numbers. Right. We just want to know, did you hit him? Did you not hit him? What, like you're saying, Brandy, what's the gap? So where did you find the gap this week? I found I had a gap in, uh, new, in starting new conversations. Uh, and then what support do you need? And then maybe we can take that support offline or we can do something in the community to support you with that. But you can see already that this shows you how to stay focused and that 72 minutes is probably the most critical because that 72 minutes is your income producing. It's you connecting with people. But one thing I will say also to you guys is that don't get too concerned about big numbers. Remember, we're not after massive numbers of, of people to, to bring in. And because of the way that the script's designed, when you have those conversations, I believe you're going to have a very high conversion rate from presenting to converting because they're qualified. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. See, so Sherry nodding. Jeff, does that make sense for you? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, so that's that. So, what I want to do now is make sure that you guys, number one, are aware. Have you downloaded this, Jeff? Have you got access to that already, or you haven't seen that yet? Yes. And Sherry, you might not have done it just yet because I know you only just got started, so you get to work through that. You're still working through your daily emails. So, definitely within seven days. The goal is that by by the time seven days are done. And so far in this group, only Brandy, myself, and Jeff, and Wendy, his wife, have launched. So Sherry hasn't launched yet, and uh, Jose hasn't launched yet. They're yet going through their training. And then we also have Claire, and we have um, Helman, who's just joined us. They're yet to launch as well. So seven days is your goal to have all of this stuff ready to start your rhythm of your daily, your daily system. And if you do that, that's how we're going to make our quantum leap in the next... 12 months. So let's bring the focus to, to the training. Uh, so just going into the, uh, the worthy ideal. So again, just the structure of that uh, for um, Sherry's and Jose's benefit. 
the goal here is you want to be accessing in the paradigm shift training in the platform. Every day you want to listen at least once a day to the recording, once a day. And there is a recording in the team, in the, in the Club 120 Networker group of the intro that we did with uh, Wendy. I think, were you there, Jeff, for that one? Well, what you <coughs> Jeff might not have been there for when we did the intro. The intro to the, uh, to the, the paradigm, the transformation training. Excuse me one second. Anyway, that's recorded in the Club 120 Networker. Take a minute to go and watch that because that gives you a bit of a, uh, a setup of how this is going to play, how it works, why we do it the way we do it. Because you might be wondering if you haven't been a part of that, why are we listening to something over and over again every day? Like that doesn't make sense. You should understand why it's designed specifically and intentionally that way. Fernando, what about, um, what about maybe tagging our new members in that? That'd probably be a good idea. Right. Yeah. So when, when you guys add somebody, um, tag them in that post. Fernando will tag all of us for now. And then um, from here on out, just tag your new people when they come in so that they can watch that same thing. Yeah. Do you want me to show um, the goal sheet then, Fernando? Is that what's next? I can get it ready. Um, so just as we go into this, so before we do, before we go into the goal sheet, let's talk about um, a couple of points from, from the actual program, right? So make sure that you do go and read. You have to read. So there, every lesson has, when you access the paradigm sheet, there's a whole participant guide. I recommend that you download that. It's a PDF and you save it because you're going to be working with that every week. And then you're going to work through your sheets, which are next to each lesson. So like for today, uh, the goal was to complete sheet number one. And if you haven't done that yet, that's okay. You don't have to go through that. So just to explain the process, my role is to facilitate the lesson. Uh, I've had uh, a lot of experience with Bob Proctor's material because I've been studying it for a long time. But I am going to allow myself to look at my notes because I want to make sure that you guys get the most value from the program rather than try and just talk through it. Because we can do that on one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I want to make sure that I don't miss anything that I think will be valuable for you as we go through this process. Is that fair enough? Yeah. So, let me just go through my notes here. So, okay, so in terms of the um, expectations, instead of some of the rules, if you want, you know, one thing that's really important is that we, took, uh, that we do take responsibility uh, for our own learning um that we are respectful of each other say so someone's sharing now if if i want to create a, an opportunity for us here where i'm a can you hear me yes yeah so i think brandy's muted so create an opportunity where you know we might bring jeff on board and say hey jeff tell us about you know what you know what you've done this week and i might provide some coaching and the value of that is that in coaching one person everyone else gets coached right but of course, that will be with permission from you guys to make sure that you're comfortable about. And, and this is a safe environment too, right? This is a safe place for us. We make ourselves vulnerable. And it's in making ourselves vulnerable that we actually get the growth. And remember, this is transformation. So this is where, this is where the, the magic happens. It's what happens here that's going to allow you to go into the marketplace and connect with people and help people uh, join your businesses and it will also ensure that you don't sabotage your results because we all, believe it or not, have programs from a very young age. Some of those programs serve us. Some of those programs don't serve us. And one of the biggest complaints, one of the biggest things, or well, not complaints, but what I see in this industry, and I've coached close to 3,000 people now from all over the world, as you guys can imagine, working with the lead marketing pro, it's the same things happen all the time. You know, I can't attract people. I don't have a team. People don't stay with me. People don't follow me. People don't do what I say. Uh, I sabotage myself all the time. I'm my own worst enemy. I don't believe I can do it. My partners don't believe in me. Like, is this sounding familiar to you guys? We hear that all the time. And a lot of that is our own program because as we shift, what happens is our team around us shifts. You know, all of a sudden, the people that don't, re don't resonate with our vibration, they're like, I don't want to be part of your team anymore. I'm going to find another opportunity. Thank you, right? Yes, we need you to go and find where you fit because you don't fit here. And you don't have to kick people out. They actually will find they don't. Now, Jeff, if I can use an example, you guys recently had a conversation with a person, right? That you were prospecting 
were you involved in that? We won't say names, but were you involved in that discussion? Uh, I'm not sure which, per which person you're talking okay, about. So there was one person that Wendy was prospecting that ended up in a conversation and then he reached out to me and the way he was handling oh, the whole yes. thing, yes. Yeah, the way he was handling the whole thing just didn't resonate with that team culture. And all I did was just provided some direct coaching to him saying, you know, this is what we focus on. This is what makes sense. And in the end, uh, when he was able to coach him and guide him and say, here's some resources for you to help you win your game. I didn't have to bring him on board. You see, so you have to, you can only do that when you know what you stand for and what it is that you want to achieve for yourself. So we have to be willing to experiment with the ideas. Um, you're not going to get a brain hernia. You may not even discover something new. It's not about that. It's not about learning something we haven't learned before. And you're going to see more of that with Bob Proctor. There's a huge gap between what we know and what we do. And I think we can all agree that we know a lot more than what we do. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And if we actually did everything we know how to do, do you think we might be in a better place? <laughs> yeah. And that, that goes for me as well. That goes for all of us, right? So that's what the intention is here. How do we set that vision that's big enough that's going to have us do the things that we want to do, that we have to do in order to get that quantum leap that we want? I mean, even believing for a quantum leap, you know, <clears throat> hand in hand, right, for all of us, how many of you all honestly believe that you could turn your annual income, whatever you're earning right now from your jobs, how many of you believe you could do that in a monthly or a, it's a monthly or a weekly income? Who thinks that's possible? Hand in heart. Yeah. yeah. Who, who found that a little bit challenging at some point? Of course. Yeah. At some point it was like, really? I don't, my wife still does, <laughs> you know, because she has a whole different mindset. She still thinks like, Oh, really? No, you don't do that. And so it, it, it takes transformation, right, to get to that point. So very, very important. Okay, so let's go through, let's go through the content. So who did listen to the lesson at least once, just so we know where we're all at? Once, Jeff, I know you've listened to it, I've listened to it. Wendy, have you listened to any of them at all? Wendy, no, Wendy, Sherry? Um, I've listened to... Um, like your Facebook training. Um, I listened through part of that and I'm not really sure which training you're referencing, but uh, uh, yeah. so this like is the videos you're on to. the training platform. Yeah, so I listened to the start here and number 12. Okay, so the next one, yeah, so the next one is Paradigm Shift. Lesson one, that's the one that we're talking about today. So you're going to get the benefit of the lesson but now you're going to go and listen to that one. And you'll also be listening to number two for this week. Because we Got it. So let's talk about, before listening to this lesson, maybe Brandy and Jeff, you guys can share, what were some of the goals that you had thought about for yourselves prior to doing the work? Uh, for me, I mean, just getting started and my wife kind of leading the way, I didn't really have any goals in mind at that point. Um, I mean, I basically just got started last week. So that was one yeah. of the first things I did was watching that video. What about goals in life generally? Like I know you've got a job, right? So goals in life generally, have you sat down and thought about goals beforehand? Yeah. So, I mean, goals with the current job I had would be, you know, opportunities for advancement, being able to make more, um, being able to become more educated, more qualified. Um, I would say now after watching the video uh, that it's a little bit easier for me to see where I can make a shift to being able to do it for myself more than using my employer to do it for me. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, achieve the goals within the company as opposed to you representing yourself. Were you yeah. excited about those goals that you had set for yourself working like, you know, within a structure? Did you, want to get, did you want to jump out of bed first thing in the morning and say, I can't wait to go after the goal of work advancement? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about you, Brandy? Um, my goals, before you want it before I did this exercise or now? Yeah, before the exercise. Before? What did, what did you think about goals? I don't know. Goals, um, I always think that I write down goals or, you know, think about goals and then 
I don't know. I just kind of forget about them. Like they're not, you know, they're, they, I was setting the A goals or the Beagles stuff. I wasn't excited about if you guys have listened, if you haven't listened to it, it's fabulous. Seriously. I could listen to it every day. It all jazzed up, but I was, I was setting Beagles and those are goals that just really are not exciting. That really don't push you forward. There are things that you want, but there's not really a drive behind it. So that's what my goals were before, before I did the exercise. Awesome. So just for the benefit of uh, Jose and for Sherry here, uh, in, the, in the lesson, Bob goes into the three types of goals that people set. And most people are still stuck in that A-type goal, which Brenda's talking about, which is knowing what you've done before. You know, I want to get a car. Well, have you ever bought a car before? Yes, not a good goal. Now, interesting about that, um, again, and I can use this as an example because I've had the, the, the privilege, really, of speaking to so many people from so many different places, and I've just learned so much. But can you guys imagine, let me just ask you, out of all the conversations I've had, what do you think is the number one goal that most people tell me when they come to a lead marketing pro as a community? What, is the, what do you think is the number one goal they want to achieve in 12 months? Financial freedom? No. No. It's not the number. Some people say that, but it's not the number one goal. Um, spend time with her family, with their family. No, also an important one, but no. Interestingly enough, it's not. Eighty percent, eighty percent of people have the same goal. It starts with the word "get." I know. <laughs> Go for it. It's get out of debt. Yeah. 80% of people, the number one goal is to get out of debt. And they think that's a great goal because they think if I don't have the debt, I'm excited, but it's a terrible goal. And you're going to listen to Bob explain about that. That's an A-type goal. A B-type goal is a goal where you look at everything that you know, your skill set, your resources around you, and you say to yourself, well, if I did this and if I did that and if I put that in place, I'm going to get there. So therefore, that's a, I'm going to go after that goal. That's also not a good goal because it's not inspiring. And so what I'm always asking people is, when, when we do coaching around goals, what is a goal? And this is what I want you to think for yourselves and as Bob explains it. What is a goal that truly excites you, inspires you, and also scares the living daylight? And that makes it a good goal because now you're like, oh my God, I have no idea how I'm going to do that. So this is why I love Quantum Leap for us as a team because to go for a Quantum Leap, we, I haven't done a Quantum Leap before in this area. This is new to me. But the idea scares me because I'm putting myself on the line. It's a big thing to say. But there's also evidence that other people have done it. We just haven't done it collectively yet, but there is evidence others have done it, but we want to experience it for ourselves. So... Do I get inspired to get out of bed every morning to, to impact people globally and change their lives? Yes, it does. Does it make me want to stay up at late at night? You know, like last night I was on a call with a guy from Mallorca in Spain from the UK talking on the phone. It was 10 p.m. I'm excited to do I want to be doing that to be in bed because it's like this guy, you know, heart-centered guy. He's looking for an opportunity. He's frustrated. He's stuck. And we've got a great way to help this guy. So it's exciting. So it keeps me up at night. And I have no idea how the quantum leap is going to come together, but I know that if we do our, our spas every day, we're going to be on our way to doing that. Does that make sense? So as you go to set this goal, and you may have already done yours, and I'll ask you to share, and you don't have to share your goal, by the way, with the group if you don't want to. This is not like we're going to share everything. I'm going to put everything on the table. It's only if you want and you're comfortable sharing stuff that you have to, you know, that you can do that. But... You want to be thinking about this. And Bob takes you through the process. Everything starts with fantasy, right? Now, fantasy is a great thing because fantasy is also imagination. And we're going to learn later on that imagination is actually one of our mental faculties. It's like a muscle that we just have to develop. We used to have it as a kid. We used to be very good. We used to daydream. We used to fantasize. You guys remember that? Until the teachers told us to stop daydreaming and pay attention, right? And Bob explains that. Um, but you're all, you're all looking very comfortable to me, sitting in your chairs, right? That chair, I mean, they're all different chairs that we're all sitting on. That was once an idea in someone's head. The way that chair that you got, Sherry, looks pretty comfy. 
Uh, <laughs> that was once just an idea in someone's head. They thought about, oh, maybe leather, maybe swivel. You know, maybe I can lean back. You know, mm, I'm going to design something. And then there it goes. Gets designed. So everything starts with fantasy. And then what we need to do is take that fantasy and turn it into what? Reality. Before reality, there's a step. Anyone remember from the training? Jeff? It's, uh, it's an idea. An idea how, like a, is that what it, I, I don't know, is it an idea or is that? Theory. I think it's an idea. Theory. theory, that's what it is. Idea to theory. It's yeah. idea and then theory. Correct, you take the fantasy and we turn it into theory. How do you turn it into theory? You write it down. You write it down and then from that theory becomes the what? Reality? Yeah, the fact, the reality. The yeah. manifestation in physical form. And, and this is why, because we are spiritual beings, we have an intellect and we live in a physical body. Everything comes from spirit. Every idea comes from spirit. It gets intellectualized. It then gets put into a theory, it gets processed, and then it manifests in physical form. It's the same thing working over and over, and it doesn't matter what the goal is. But, I mean, I'm sure we're all going to have different goals in the next 12 months. But, you know, but I think one of those goals for all of us is to have a team. We all want a big team, because that means we're touching lives, we're impacting people, and that's what's going to allow us to have the things that we want. Any comments about any of what we've shared so far, guys? Is this helpful? Yeah, yes. Is it helpful to, look at, to really understand how this all works? Okay, cool. So, so Brandon, do you want to share? Do you want to share maybe a little bit about your process that you went through as you went through? You know, listening to the lesson, coming together with the goals. Maybe what what moved you? What challenged you? What did you realize about yourself as far as what you had done versus what you're doing now? Okay, so um, going through the training, like listening to that every day, um, it made total sense to me about the A, B, and C goals, and that I had been playing smaller than, than I needed to be playing, right? Because, you know, when my, just like when we're little kids, we have these, these really big goals, these fantasies, and we really believe that they're real, right? And so I think, you know, being beat down over, you know, over the years, you know, people telling you, get a real job, you know, what you're doing, whatever, right? We just haven't, haven't learned what we need to learn to move forward. And so I started to dream again. And I've had, you know, some of the same goals, but like I could visualize them just from listening to the training and then going through the exercise. Like, you know, I could really visualize them, like really visualize me doing the being and doing and having the things, you know, from the training. So so yeah, I think it was just an opportunity and I'm kind of one of those that likes to check off, you know, okay, I did that, right? So with the paper, you know, going through it and, and getting, you know, I got, I bought, uh, I bought this at Elite Academy. Can you see that? Biohacker. So this is, this is my um, Bob Proctor, you know, my paradigm shift journal. So I actually wrote down all the questions and then answered them because there's something with writing it down and I'm, I'm a note taker. And so um, I wrote it down. The only part that I didn't get done is the card and I needed to print that out and I needed ink. So, so I just got that done right before we jumped on. But yeah, that was what I, I decided I'd been playing small, that I could have anything and I could create anything and the possibilities are endless. And um, so that's, that's what I got out of it. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Jeff. Thanks. Um, I mean, I think I kind of explained the, the shift in my thought process from the videos a minute ago where, you know, rather than focusing on, you know, my employment and the goals that and the opportunities I have there, focusing more on what I'm able to do for myself on my own and not having to rely on my employer to do it. Yeah, awesome. So, so very, very important to understand the distinctions here because this is playing at a whole different level. This is... You know, if you've anyone here read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich? No? Anyone not familiar with the book? I'm familiar with it. I just haven't read it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you can access, I know I, I might actually share it in the group. I'll share chapter nine, the PDF of chapter nine, which is consistent. It talks about that only 2% of people, only 2% of people have the goals written down. 
And so, you know, little wonder there's so many people, actually even just thinking about the network marketing industry, bringing it to what we're doing here, we know the statistics, don't we? They're not very good, are they? They're not very good. 3% of people make 97% of the income, right? Most people don't succeed. Is it because the industry doesn't work? No. Is it because the industry is geared for failure? A few things it is. I'm surprised, right? What do you think? Actually, what do you think it is? What do you think, like in the context of this conversation, what do you think the numbers are the way they are in the industry? I think it's because people have difficulty being consistent. Perfect. What also, else? also, they don't follow the system. They don't yeah. recruit, they don't duplicate, they, they don't take, take, take actions. Um, well, the basis, the basis the, the, on, the, on these uh, industries that you maintain and sort the leadership that you, you would like to involve in, in your network marketing. Yeah. So consistency, Sherry, and follow through. Follow through, Jose, as you're saying, following through doing the recruiting, the prospecting. They're both one and the same. And the reason why that is the case is because they don't have a vision big enough to make them want to continue to take the actions every single day. Can you see how that works? To me, you know, and I actually put a video up on LinkedIn yesterday. I think, uh, Brandy, I know you saw it. And you guys might have seen it on the Facebook as well. Are your labels holding you back is what I said on that video. Are your labels holding you back? And actually, I was inspired at church because a girl was diagnosed with some rare disease and uh, the doctor called a label that was upon her, the name of that disease. It's like you've now been labeled as, you know, we talk about cancer or diabetes. They're all labels. But then it got me thinking, you know, there's also labels about my name, my age. I even took my hat off and I said, if you saw the video, I said, you know, I'm bald, right? I said, thank you. You're, you're doing me proud. Right? <laughs> They're matching my uh, stuff. These are all labels, and there's no industry, I believe, and I've done corporate work, I've done many different types of jobs. I don't believe there's an industry that will cause your paradigm, which is what we're talking about here, that program that's inside of us, nothing I've seen causes that to come out and flesh out as strongly as what this does. Any, any thoughts about, am I good enough? Can I make this work? Can I be consistent? Will people follow me? Can... Am I able to have that conversation with a stranger? What are they going to think about me? Are they going to think I'm silly? Are they going to think, who the heck am I? And what if they're making more money than me? And what if they're already successful? These are all labels that we put on ourselves. And so what I believe is missing for people here, and, I, and I've proven it because of the people I've spoken to, is that I don't have a vision. We, have, we all have sight. But do we understand the difference between sight and vision? Who can explain the difference between the two to me? Like to the group here. What's the difference between sight and vision? I think sight is seeing something and vision is knowing. That's what vision is to me, is knowing, like creating, when you create the vision, like you know that, like sight is just seeing, right? But vision is creating whatever you want. And maybe I'm wrong, but that's... Yeah, so... So vision, a vision is an image that you have of something that you want to aspire to and sight is what's in front of your eyes. So I think it was Helen Keller said that, you know, she pitied people that had, because she had no vision, like she had no sight. Remember, Helen Keller was deaf and she was blind and she said there are people that have sight but no vision. And so what it means is that what we're trying to do here is you set a vision for your 12 months but you don't focus on the site, which is the results that are in front of you. And this is what happens in the industry. People look at, okay, they get excited, they get sponsored into a team, and, they, and they, there's the hype, you know, there's that ignorance on fire, and they go out and they say to them, you know, share like a, like, a, like a coffee shop, like a restaurant, like a movie, you know, all that sort of stuff. And they don't get the results that they thought they wanted to see, and so they lose sight of the vision. And then they don't become consistent, they don't take the action, they don't follow through, and they become a statistic, and hence we prove the numbers are there again. Does that make sense? So why the industry doesn't work is because people don't really allow themselves the time to set a vision. So today, this week is your opportunity 
no joke. No, I'm, just, I'm saying this with all seriousness. This is time for the first time maybe in all of our lives to really go for something new, right? And you have an opportunity with the training that's in front of you to, and, and don't cheat yourselves by not doing the work. Like you're not cheating anybody. Like it doesn't, you know, it's not up to me signing up and hey, you're a good person, you did the work. The only person you're cheating is you, your family, and, and those millions of lives that you could possibly impact if you followed through, right? Because that's really what's in your hands right now, that opportunity to impact so many people. So you want to make sure that you understand how do I set the vision over the next 12 months that is truly going to want me, want me to get out of bed every morning and it's going to keep me thinking about it last thing before I go to bed. And I don't even have to know the how. Like if you, you see in the training, Bob Proctor talks about we don't have to know the how. Now, why don't you need to know the how? Because we are working with universal law. And universal law is precise, right? This is why, you know, NASA can get a rocket and they can set destination moon and they can actually make it land with the precision of a fraction of a second, right? Because of those universal law, you know, um, cause and effect, everything that goes into that. And some of these laws will become more manifest as we go through this journey together over the next 12 to 24 weeks. Any comments about any of that from, from you guys? You're all mesmerized. <laughs> You're like, what the heck is going on here? This is not goal setting the way that I, uh, I look at goal setting. So just, I guess, you know, just in terms of a personal story, you know, and, and this is me being a little bit vulnerable with you guys, which I don't really mind. You know, I tend to, wear my heart on my sleeve anyway like you probably get a you know get a sense of that with me but what we're creating today has been a vision in my mind probably for about 20 years believe it or not 20 years i've joined companies like you all have like who who other than me this is not the first rodeo in network marketing <laughs> anyone here tried network marketing before jeff you have i know brandy you have also Luis, i know you definitely have multiple times <laughs> Now, this is not your first time, Sherry. This is your second time, right? So we've all tried it before. And I've joined teams. I've joined big teams. I've joined small teams. And I've tried it. I've been trying it since I was about, since I was about 16. And not knowing what I wanted to do, I started learning about the mind. And that's what got me. I actually learned about Bob Proctor through network marketing, believe it or not, in a network marketing training session that was being held by that team. And I, I went to Canada and I learned about Bob and I've been studying him and I got qualified with this program, thinking into results. And I knew that there was a way for us to bring this together, but I didn't know how. And it's only been in the last two and a half years since I joined the Lead Marketing Pro after I was let go from my corporate job that I started to think about what do I do with my life? And I did actually go back to corporate after I was let go for seven years because my wife got a bit nervous that, you know, you know we're used to a six-figure income, what are you going to do now? And to be honest, after two months, I, I said to my boss at the time, I'm sorry, but I can't do this anymore. Uh, I'd rather just figure something else out. But I, I was dying every day. And I'm not, this is not a criticism on jobs. You know, we all, a job is something to be grateful for because it creates the opportunity for us to pursue our dreams. Right? Like there is a place for a job until we get to a point where we can serve in a different way. And then we can release our job. I'm not a promoter of... I'm going to sack my boss. You know how people use that in marketing? You know, do you want to sack your boss? Do you want to, like, I don't promote any of that because that creates a negative vibration. And the more you create a negative vibration, the stronger it is, the longer you keep the job, believe it or not, right? So it really is about feeling grateful for where you're at, but being ready to release it to the next person that needs that job because there's someone that needs the job, isn't there? There's someone who's either graduating or coming out of life, has been unemployed for a while, doesn't have these opportunities in front of them, doesn't got the awareness, they need your job. And as you are sent to the next level, that'll become open for them. And so I knew that I wanted to do this, you know, uh, for the industry, but I didn't know how. And it's only through time. I've kept my vision. I've kept my vision about being a thought leader in this industry for probably 15 years. And I believe now for the first time, um, it's all come together. We have a system. I have the honor of meeting Brandy online, partner up. Brandy believed in what I was doing, uh, made a good fit. And everything just seems seamless, hasn't it, Brandy? Everything has just seemed like 
one foot after the next. There's been no challenges. We're just yeah, unfolding, set the thing together, started reaching out, and, and through that, been able to invite you guys to partner up with us. And I believe that we're all very much aligned. We're all very heart centered people because I know, you know, you guys have had a chance to speak with you. And, and we're going to continue to attract people like that. So for me, I can say that even being here, and it might, be, you know, it might seem like there's only like nine, ten of us in our group right now. Well, two weeks ago, there was only, we had probably one person in our Club 120 Club Facebook group for about three weeks. We had one person who was the only member, and she was posting every week, and I said to her, just keep the faith, we're going to grow, we're going to grow. And in the last week and a bit, we've added like about five or six people that have decided to partner up with us. And, and we are still working on stuff, Brandy and I, that are going to help you guys even bring more people under you, where we're going to support you with qualified leads to go and have those conversations. So it's, it's all happening, but it's happened because I did this work, I set a vision, and I wrote my little goal card, which I don't carry around anymore because I've said it so many times, I actually, it became knowledge. You know, there's a difference between you know, looking at something and knowing something. And the reason why you want to carry that card initially in your hand, Bob talks about it, write it out. So you're going to go through a process of writing all your wants, like a shopping list, personal, and then your professional wants, like a shopping list. And then you're going to choose one of each that you really want to go after. Now, for me, you know, do we want material things? Yes, we want nice cars, nice houses. We want to travel. Because God wants us to enjoy those things. God expresses himself through us, I believe, personal opinion. I'm not going to say that's for everybody, but that's me. But for me, really, honestly, if I put my hand in my heart, nothing excites me more than to know that I am actually speaking with someone and connecting with someone and creating an opportunity for them to say, wow, this is going to change my life. Like the gentleman I was talking to today that came on board, he's older than me a little bit. He's also um, uh, trained in, in, in leadership and stuff like that and trying like I've been trying for a long time. But I feel privileged to know that we're inviting him into a very special group where we've got answers for him that he can now go and duplicate and actually have everything that he's been striving for probably for the last 20, 30 years in their life. And that's what's available to all of us. That's what really excites me as a goal. So I've kept that vision. So you'll do your shopping list of wants, personal, professional, you're going to pick two. And then you're going to write in your goal card, I am so... Actually, the card already has written for you. I think it already has it. I'm so happy and grateful now that. And you want to say it is and put the date. And I am now. When you write your goal, you want to make sure that... And if you want some coaching on it, I, I recommend that you take the coaching from Brandy or myself about how to write the goal in the prison. Because if your subconscious, we're going to learn a lot about that in this program doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not real. For now, you're just going to take my word on that, but you're going to learn that for yourself as Bob explains. So when you say, I'm so happy now that it's 2018 December and I am now consistently earning X amount and I now have a team of X amount of people, or I am so happy and grateful now that I am sitting here on the steps in Rome, having the birds peel on my shoulder, um, <laughs> you know, with my partner, enjoying life, your subconscious doesn't know that. So what he thinks is, oh my gosh, I've got to get to work. This guy has got a done deal. He already sees himself there. I've got to catch up. So I better bring in the resources, the ideas, the circumstances, the people to make that work. Now, now that we've explained this, what do you think getting out of bed is? Why is getting out, why is getting out of debt the worst goal? He can tell me. You hear me? You got the worst goal? There's a lot of background noise. It's hard to oh, hear you. Who's banging plates? Is that you, Brandy? <laughs> no, it's not Brandy. Is that you, Jeff? Um, I had a peep in here. Was it the right cookie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, can, you can mute your microphone for one second. You can mute, mute. Getting, out of, getting out of debt is a bad goal because it's depressing. Not, not exciting. In, in part, yeah, in part. What else? Why else is that a bad goal? Based on what we've been talking about. 
focusing on the negative? Yeah, absolutely. So if what you focus on expands, think about it, if where, where focus goes, energy flows and results show, right? So where focus goes, energy flows. So if you want to get out of debt, what's the dominant thought? Debt, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if you think about that, the word debt already has an anchor emotionally. Arguments with your spouse. Um, come on, let's be real, right? Um, yeah, Jeff, you're smiling, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, frustration. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily anger, but just, you know, dead money going away, all that sort of stuff, right? So, there's already an anchor programming us about debt. And so, it's like... If you're a farmer and you've got, a, and you've got a, a plot of land that's healthy and you put a line down the middle and you grab a seed of corn and you plant it on one side and you grab a seed of nightshade, which is a poisonous plant, and you plant it on the other side and you decide for yourself, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to um, fertilize and water the nightshade. That's the soil. That's the soil. You look at the two seeds and say, hang on a second, Mr. Farmer. I can allow you to expand the nightshade. That's going to kill millions of people. I'm going to grow the corn. It doesn't do that, right? In response to the seed that's been nurtured, fertilized, and watered. So if we take that example and, and think about our mind is that fertile soil, and we decide that we're going to plant the seed of debt as the goal, getting out of debt, the subconscious doesn't pick up the add off, it just picks up the dead. And you're adding emotion to that. The, the universe looks at it and says, Well, that's your dominant thought. That's what you're emotionally connected to. That's what the circumstances that I have to manifest for you. So I'm going to give you more of it. <laughs> and we don't want that. So when you go to write your exercise for your own goals, if you're still working through that, the best question to ask yourself is, Okay, we get it. We've got debt. Everybody's got debt pretty much. Um, hang on. We've got to get this Brandy out. Brandy's. Get back. So if you want to get out of debt, the question you've got to ask yourself, well, actually, what's a better question? What's a better question to ask yourself? Other than get out of debt, what's a question? A better question. Sure. How about um, how can I make more money or increase my value? Yeah, how can I increase my value? Or what about if I didn't have the debt, what would, that, what would, make, what would that make possible? Right? If that didn't exist, what, the, what, what could I do that I can't do right now? And so that becomes your goal. Now, if I didn't have the debt, then I'd probably be able to invest. In, uh, buy myself some nicer things or whatever that may look like for you. Now, does that mean that we're using the philosophy of uh, out of sight, out of mind? You know, like Fernanda, get real. You know, the debt's not going to go away. The bank's going to come knocking. We're not talking about that at all. Right now, all of us, if you're carrying debt, you are paying your debt somehow. Even if you're borrowing from Paul to pay Peter, you're still paying the debt, right? There's a system in place and you're making your payments. So that continues. You continue to do that, but you don't feed it like that seed. You just you don't feed it. You don't fertilize it. You don't water it. You don't give it any energy. All your emotional energy goes to the goal, the vision that you're falling in love with. And so that dies off, that prospers, and what will happen is in the attainment of the goal, your debt takes, gets taken care of. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... What, what, are you, what are you hearing from this lesson as we facilitate this? What are you hearing about goals, about setting goals, about the types of goals? Um, what are things that are opening up for you? Like, is any of these making a difference for you? Is it something you've heard of all before type of stuff? I'm curious to know where you're at with the, what we're sharing right here right now. Anybody? For me, I think... Uh... I just need to make sure my goals are clear and well defined, um, and that I that I have them in writing. 
and that I make sure I revisit them frequently. So with the revisiting frequently, Jeff, that's a really good point. That's what that card is about. So when you click on paradigm shift, um, maybe Brandy, can you share your screen quickly? Is Brandy here? Yeah, what do you want on it? Go to paradigm shift. The um, worksheet? The team, now the team training platform. Okay. Like a pro. <laughs> oh, what does this mean? Yeah, my account. Click on my account because you're already open. Click on my account because you're okay. already open. There we go. Paradigm shift, the second button. <coughs> Scroll down to lesson one and um, hey, cl click on the goal. Yeah? So you see here, this is your goal card. So you want it, once you've done the work and written out all your wants and written out all your professional wants and you want to get it into a succinct statement starts with, there you go, I'm so happy and grateful now that. And so you would say, I'm so happy and grateful now that it's December 2018 and I now, consist, uh, I now have a team of X amount of people consistently earning X amount per month and as a result, I am now enjoying a wonderful tribute in the Bahamas uh, with my spouse or my friends on my team, uh, zipping pina coladas, living life on my team. So you can see that it's specific, it's measurable, right? Because you've got the date, you've got the amount, and you've got what you're doing, and you've got it in color, right? Now, what you want to do with that is you want to print it out and you want to carry it with you, and Bob talks about it loosely, but you want to be touching this card as often as possible, right? And the reason you want to be touching it as often as possible is because as you read it and you touch it, touch is one of our uh, five senses, right? And the senses is what act as the data entry ports into our mind, right? Into, into ourself. So as you touch it, what happens is the signal, the vibration from the image travels to your, to your nervous system to make the cells in your brain that are impregnated with that image. So you read the words, you touch it, you feel it, and the vision pops up in your mind. Can you see how the vision just appears? Can you see yourself in the Bahamas, sipping pina coladas by the poolside? You can imagine that, right? That's the image. And then you allow yourself to get emotionally connected with that image. You get to a point where you don't even have to read it anymore. You can just touch it. And just by holding it in your hand, immediately that image pops up in your mind because you've already connected it to your nervous system. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, you, so you want to carry it with you. Keep it in your pocket. Keep it in your purse. Carry it with you. Now, part of our part of our daily system is to be working with a morning ritual. So you need to make sure that you are doing your morning ritual, that you are working with your thirty day morning ritual for success. And I often say that if you're not getting up in the morning to meditate, to be grateful, to reflect on this goal, and to write down the movie script that expands this goal into a story, it's like saying to universe, and I'm guilty because I don't always do it still, it's like for that day you're saying to universe, I know you can go and work for me, but you know what, today, today I've got it. You know, thank you very much, but I've got this one. And that's crazy, right? Because universe can do so much more for us than what we can do for ourselves. So while we're working on something, universe can be working on something else, attracting to us other resources, but we have to invest the time in doing this work. This is, you know, we'll talk about Slight Edge and uh, if you're not reading the book, of course, you start reading it soon. It's part of the training. This is a Slight Edge activity. You know, doing your, your writing your goals out or your vision because it's a simple to do thing that can give you an exponential result. But the danger is that it's so simple to do that it could also be so simple not to do. Simple not to do, right? So that's the goal card. You want to print it out, follow the instructions on, on, on well, listen to the lesson, read the guide, read the summary, do the work, print the card out, carry it with you wherever you go, 
And if any of you want to come back next week and share what you know, then feel free to do that. One of the good things about sharing your goals is that you have other people believing with you and adding energy to your goal. Does that make sense? It's like we're all focusing on your goal for you and we're believing with you that you're going to attract the resources to manifest that in due course. Any, any questions or thoughts? We're coming up to, to the hour, so I want to wrap it up. Um, I have a question on our on uh, this goal. Is this like should we do like just a certain amount of time frame from now, or is it our main goal? Like, you see what I'm saying? We want to set this up as your as your twelve month goal okay. because this is your vision, right? This is the vision that's going to get you out of bed, and then you want to work on your milestone. So maybe you work on on a milestone. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Because remember, we've got sight, but we've got the vision. And we want to set the vision at the top. This, is, this goal here is your quantum leap. You know, we talk about quantum leap. So what is your quantum leap? And a quantum leap is not 20 people in your team. Is it? What's that? Is that your quantum leap? 20 people? I'm sorry. Can you, can you repeat again? Yeah, you, this is where you're going to write down your quantum leap, right? So, so quantum leap being, you know, um, in Spanish, un salto cuántico, like a, a long, a big, and, and the reason why you want it to be a quantum leap, and you'll hear that from Bob from module 12, you hear it from the, if, if you've watched the lesson on the philosophy, we talked about quantum leap, you heard the story of Cliff Young, that was quantum leap. It takes the same amount of discomfort to go for a to go for a um, linear growth than it does to go for a quantum leap. <laughs> so if we're going to be challenged and we're going to be uncomfortable, <coughs> sorry about that. If we're going to be uncomfortable, why not go for the quantum leap? Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you're doing this as a couple, so Jeff, if you're doing this with Wendy, because you guys are both working the business. <coughs> I'm muting, but it keeps on unmuting. If you're guys, if you're both going for the uh, working the business, you want to make sure that your goals are aligned, right? So, so that you're not going in opposite directions because that's going to create a challenge. Uh, same for you, Sherry. If you and your, I think your husband, you're married, yeah. If you're together or your partner, if you're going to do it together, you got to be aligned. Did we lose Fernando? <laughs> Fernando, are you okay? Thank you. <laughs> we can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, oh there you are. are. Oh. <laughs> Hang on a second. I think I'm losing power. <laughs> That's why he needed his power cord. You shall be back, I'm sure. <laughs> Is Wendy working tonight, Jeff? Yeah, 3 to 11. Ugh. That's no fun. One more hour. <laughs> yeah, it's only eight here, so I'm thinking that's three more hours. That's a long, long night, but yeah, you're ahead of me. There he is. <laughs> note, note to self, plug computer in. <laughs> Very good. So I just want to hear you guys just share one, one just as we go through and wrapping up now. From every one of you, just one takeout from today's lesson so that we know that you got something that you can walk away with and there's value here for you. So maybe let's let's work from the top. Can't see everybody here. Let's have a look. Sherry, let's start with you. Sure. So um, so it was very interesting to um, 
have started this whole process and be in church yesterday and hear the speaker talking about transformation. Um, because, you know, we all get what we need out of anything, right? And so he was talking about how as much as you may want transformation, it can't happen from the inside. It has to happen from the outside. And that is so much what this whole group is about. It's about all of us coming together and effectively um, assisting each one of us from the outside, right? To make that transformation on the inside. And um, so I really liked the whole idea about the card and carrying it and the, um, the touch of it because um, another uh, philosophy that I've read so much about um, is utilizing the imagination and the, using the sense of touch within your imagination. And so I think I would carry it just one step further than just touching the card but to touch the, the concept within the card, to be able to think about it um, as you're holding it and to touch what it represents. So like to me, my big dream is um, to have a fantastic house, right? So I would, in holding that card, I would touch things within my home as I'm holding it. So okay. I think the card is a, is a really great concept. Awesome. That's a great share. Thank you for that. Um, Jose. Oh, well, for me, I think is that you, you have some break, breakthroughs. I don't know if it's correct, but is that you change or you put yourself in risk and try to, to make something that you never imagined that you can do. I don't know if, if it's correct, this, this, this point. I think yeah. that the, it's, it's something, the, the, something like that, the idea, right? Yeah, you're, you're setting a goal that you truly want. It has nothing to do with what you think you can do or what you know you can do, or what you've done before. All that matters is, do you want it? And how much do you want it? And the how, the how will be manifest to you as you embark on that journey, doing what you can every day. And in the book, you see there are some steps that you start to take towards achieving that goal. Now, those steps have been created for you in our daily sparse tracker and those activities within our group. But there might be other things that you can do, including starting your day with a morning ritual where you write the goal down and that's in the training as well. There's a, there's a whole um, morning ritual success journal you can download as well and yeah. basically start working with that for 30 days. That's keeping that image alive and asking universe to attract to you everything that you need. But definitely going for something you want you've never done before. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very good. All right, Jeff idea of the subconscious and being able to use daily activities with your goal setting to influence oh you sound a bit faint i can hardly hear you okay the idea of the subconscious and being able to use daily activities to influence your subconscious yeah a slight edge over time yeah uh when we get to less than three or four we're going to talk about the uh um the magic uh the magic genie and the magic genie you're going to laugh because it's going to be a graphic representation of your mind. And that's what really blew me away when I, that's what made me fall in love with Bob Proctor. When he shared to me the magic genie, it was like for the first time, everything made sense. And uh, you're going to, once you've got that image, you'll see how these ideas will become graph, like graphical. You can have graph, graphical. Uh, you can, you know, like you can, <laughs> you'll be able to see them as you plant something in your conscious, you know what that looks like and you see how you actually are impressing it from a conscious to a subconscious to manifest in physical form. You'll actually see a graphic depiction of that through the training, which is really, really empowering. So that's good, man. I'm glad that, you, that you're enjoying that because that, that is really, that is the foundation of this training. It's all about the subconscious and the programs and how to shift them. 
And it starts with the outside in, like Sherry was saying, outside in, but then transforming from the inside out. Brandy? So my biggest takeaway from the training today was um, really getting more specific. Like I had written down the goal, but even, even when we're looking at the goal card and I thought I had gotten really specific, but looking at the goal card, because I hadn't done that step yet, right? So looking at the goal card and just saying, you know, thinking, wow, like I really didn't get as specific as I should have. So, um, and now that I did, because I, you know, was writing it down while we were talking, it's, it's more of the vision, like you're saying, like, the, you know, the, the picture, like seeing it, smelling it, tasting it, knowing, you know, what it's going to feel like. Yeah, that's the key. Seeing it, smelling it, tasting it like it's a done deal. Yeah, pretty cool. Hearing, awesome. you know, hearing the laughter of my children, you know, at when we're doing, when we're celebrating the goal, you know, the, the, the milestone. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have Claire Carroll join us from South Australia. <laughs> sort of joined us on the back end, Claire. I'm not sure if we got the times wrong, uh, but we're, we're wrapping up. But uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to say hello. Oh, hi. Well, are, are we just finishing, are we? Have I just come Yeah, we're end? done. We started an hour ago. Oh. Bummer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, no problem. It's recorded. I, I'll, be put, I will, I'll be putting this recording in the group, so you'll be able to go back oh. and watch it. Okay, cool. I'll go back and watch it. So you want to just say a quick hello from South Australia? You're also new to the team. Hi, I'm actually from Sydney, New South Wales. So I am on a different Hi. time zone. That's why, I'm a compliment, why I've got it wrong. <laughs> I must be an hour difference to you. So, okay. I thought you were in South Australia. You're, now you're the same time as me. It's two o'clock, right? Two o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. So good. You get the recording next week. We'll be on at one. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm Sydney. Yeah. Hello to everybody. Right. Sydney, Hello, and UK. Sydney, Sydney slash UK, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Originally from Manchester in the UK. I've been here 21 years. So yeah, awesome. I came here, came here with a suitcase when I was 23 for a five-week holiday and said, oh my, I'm never leaving this place. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And I found, I found a way. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer. It's uh, eight minutes past the hour. Thank you so much. Uh, for taking time out of uh, your evenings or afternoons or days to join with us. I'm glad you got some value and I'll post this recording in the group so you can go back and listen to it again if you want. Other than that, start working with, uh, if you haven't done lesson one yet, do lesson one and then start working with lesson number two. So you'll be listening to that every single day. Do the assignment work from the participants guide and then the worksheets prior to the call so that you can be ready for the call next week which will be at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's on the invite there in the Facebook. Uh, and yours and mine, Claire's, we're on at the same time, which is 1, 1 p.m., okay? Uh, on the same Zoom link. So everything's, if you're not sure, just go to the, um, the weekly training in the, in the team training platform and you'll see the times they set up. So next week, Brandy, you're on? Um, I'll, be, I'll be in the Bahamas. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, okay, so next yeah. week I'll be... Okay, so maybe what we'll do next week we might do, because we want to break it out to give you some marketing stuff. So maybe next week we'll do some stuff on marketing and then we'll come back to, um, to this training the week after. So that'll give you guys that are only starting out an opportunity to do this week on lesson one and next week on lesson two. And then we'll come back and do that in two weeks' time. Cool? Cool. Awesome. Good job, guys. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Hey, Jeff, uh, Jeff, before you go, good luck on that call that's pending, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.